Welcome to the Didn't Get Frazzled Presents video series. This video is Hypertension for Patients, Part 1. We will discuss what hypertension is, why it's important to treat, and how to best treat it with diet, exercise, and weight management. In Part 2, we will discuss medication management. If you are already on blood pressure medication, do not skip to Part 2. Diet, exercise, and weight management are just as important for you. This video series is directed at patients and is meant to be a supplement to the care you should be receiving from your doctor. If you are a doctor, nurse, student, or other medical professional, you're welcome to watch this as well for the simple reason that you are also patients. We are all patients at one time or another. I'm an internist, so when I say patients, I mean everyone 18 years and older. For information on children, please see your pediatrician. We'll be following the blood pressure guidelines from the JNC-8, which is the report put out in 2014 by the 8th Joint National Committee. For most people, the goal is to bring your blood pressure below 140 over 90. Prehypertension is the range between this level and 120 over 80. Optimal blood pressure is below 120 over 80. Your blood pressure is determined by the amount of blood your heart pumps and the amount of resistance to blood flow in your arteries. This pressure keeps your blood circulating to your vital organs, which keeps you alive. This is a good thing, of course, but when your pressure gets above 140 on the top or 90 on the bottom, you have hypertension. Patients always ask me, which number is more important, the top or the bottom? The answer is both. The top number is the systolic blood pressure. This is the highest pressure created by the ventricular contraction, which shoots the blood out of your heart and into the aorta. The bottom number is the diastolic blood pressure. This is the lowest pressure that occurs when your heart is resting between beats. The pressure of the blood in your vessels repeatedly shifts between these two pressures over time, so we define your blood pressure by the highest and lowest numbers. According to the JNC-8, goal blood pressure is less than 140 over 90 in all patients under 60 or patients of any age with chronic kidney disease or diabetes. For patients 60 and over without chronic kidney disease or diabetes, the goal blood pressure is less than 150 over 90. This higher goal is controversial, especially for those with other risk factors, including heart disease or stroke, and for black patients. We'll discuss racial differences more in part two when reviewing medications, but the reasoning here is that black patients are at higher risk for stroke and so might benefit at all ages from the stricter blood pressure control of 140 over 90. The reason we care about hypertension is that the extra high blood pressure on your artery walls damage the vessels. Since every vital organ in your body needs blood, every organ is affected. In the heart, this can cause heart attacks, heart failure, and aneurysms. In the brain, strokes, memory loss, and aneurysms. Your kidneys and eyes are also particularly sensitive to pressure, resulting in kidney failure and vision loss, respectively. Further complicating matters, the symptoms of hypertension tend to be something vague or nonspecific, like headache, dizziness, or feeling unwell. Most people with hypertension have no symptoms. This is why hypertension is called the silent killer. Are you getting frazzled? Well, don't. Hypertension is completely treatable, so let's get right into it. The initial treatment for hypertension is diet, exercise, and weight control. There are also some situations where you'd want to start on a medication right away, which we'll explore in part two. For diet and exercise, the JNC-8 refers to the 2013 AHA ACC guideline. For exercise, the recommendations for adults is aerobic physical activity lasting an average of 40 minutes three to four times a week. This activity should be of moderate to vigorous intensity. That's exercise causing your heart to beat fast and for you to break a sweat. Having an active job or walking to the bus stop is exercise, but probably not of a moderate to vigorous intensity. Skipping the elevator and taking the stairs is of at least moderate intensity, but you're not going to do this for 40 minutes. The take home message here is plan to exercise outside of work. Some people find that exercising for 20 minutes daily is easier than 40 minutes every other day. That's okay. It's also okay to slowly increase the amount of exercise you already do until you reach your goal. Think of diet and exercise as a lifestyle change. Take a moment to rethink how you want to live the rest of your life and if you wish to prioritize your own health. It's worth noting that exercise alone, that is without a change in diet or weight, will only lower your blood pressure by two to five points systolic and one to four points diastolic. So do not neglect diet and weight management. For weight management, the goal is to exercise and follow a healthy diet to bring your weight down to goal. For this, you'll need to know your BMI or body mass index. 
You can ask your doctor what your BMI is at your next office visit, or you can calculate it yourself with tools available on the internet. You'll need to know your accurate height and weight. Your optimal weight will give you a BMI below 25. Obesity is defined by a BMI above 30, so try to at least get your BMI below this. The main culprit in obesity is sugar, often in the form of corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup, but also in natural forms like honey and molasses or from cane and beets. Natural sugar may be natural, but it isn't healthy when added to food in large quantities, as it is in many processed foods, sodas, iced teas, and fruit juices. Weight loss deserves its own Didn't Get Frazzled Presents, so I'll address this in more depth in a future video. For a low-salt diet, we recommend the DASH diet. DASH stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. The standard DASH diet is 2,000 calories, so it's not a weight loss diet. However, you can lose weight with the DASH diet if you follow the 1,600 calorie version. The standard DASH diet has 2,300 milligrams of salt daily, or about one teaspoon. This will help prevent hypertension and is recommended for all adults. If you already have hypertension, you should follow the low salt version, also called the DASH sodium diet. And here your goal is no more than 1,500 milligrams of salt, about two thirds of a teaspoon. Given that the average American diet has around 3,400 milligrams of salt, you may need to cut your salt intake by half or more. This DASH sodium diet has been shown to start lowering your blood pressure within two weeks, and over time can drop the blood pressure eight to 14 points, which is a significant amount. Let's go through the diet by food groups. Grains include bread, cereal, and pasta. The servings listed on these slides are all for the 2,000 calorie diet, and examples of what makes up a serving are written on each slide. Grains are naturally low in fat, unless you douse them in butter, cream, and cheese. Choose brown rice over white, whole grain weight over, pasta, over regular, and whole grain bread over white. Vegetables are great natural sources of fiber, vitamins, and minerals. To get the number of servings a day that you need, think of them as part of the main course, not just a side dish. Ordering vegetarian options in restaurants will cut down on salt and fat. Fresh or frozen vegetables are recommended. With frozen, and if you must, canned vegetables, buy only if it says low sodium or no added salt. Fruit is also very healthy. Leave on the edible peels whenever possible for extra fiber and nutrients. Avoid fruit juice unless you juice it yourself or you're drinking a high quality juice with no sugar added. Fruit drink may have the word fruit in it, but don't fool yourself into thinking this is healthy. Keep in mind that grapefruit juice interacts with many medications, so check with your doctor or pharmacist first. As with the vegetables, avoid canned fruit unless no sugar is added. Dairy includes milk, yogurt, and cheese, and are good sources of calcium, vitamin D, and protein. Choose products that are low-fat or fat-free, otherwise they can be a major source of fat. Cheese is typically high in sodium, even if it's fat-free, so eat this in moderation. If you are lactose intolerant, choose lactose-free products or consider taking an over-the-counter product with meals that contains the enzyme lactase. Choose a lean variety of meat and limit to no more than six ounces daily. Trim off the skin and fat of meat and poultry and bake, broil, grill, or roast instead of frying. Opt for heart healthy fish like salmon, herring, and tuna, which are high in omega-3 fatty acids. Food in this category include almonds, sunflower seeds, kidney beans, peas, and lentils. These are good sources of magnesium, potassium, protein, and fiber. The serving sizes listed are small because this group tends to be high in calories. Nuts are high in fat, but not the, but the good kind of fat, monounsaturated and omega-3 fatty acids. They work well in stir-fry salads and cereals. Tofu and other soybean-based products are high in protein and are good alternatives to meat. Limit fat to less than 30% of the total daily calories and aim for healthy fats we discussed. The unhealthy fats are saturated fats and trans fats. Saturated fats are in red meat and dairy, like cheese, butter, and cream, so eat these in moderation. Trans fats are found in processed food and should be avoided completely. Keep in mind, food made from lard, solid shortenings, and palm or coconut oils are especially unhealthy. Non-tropical oils are a better choice. The DASH diet includes sweets, but if you also have diabetes, you should avoid these. Diet soda is a better choice than regular soda, but the best choice is not to drink soda. Water, or low-fat milk, is a good alternative. Opt for sweets that are fat-free or low-fat. Moderate to heavy alcohol use can increase your blood pressure. Current dietary guidelines recommend no more than two drinks a day for men and one drink a day for women. When I told that to one of my female patients, she said, Dr. David, that's not fair. 
I explain that it's not an issue of fairness so much as metabolism. The influence of caffeine on blood pressure is unclear, and the DASH diet does not address this. Caffeine will raise your blood pressure temporarily, so try not to have any right before seeing your doctor. Smoking is bad and raises your blood pressure. I'm guessing no one is surprised to hear this. I'll do a separate Didn't Get Frazzled Presents on smoking later. For now, do yourself and everyone around you a favor and quit smoking. To summarize the DASH diet, avoid fast foods and fried foods and cut out as much processed food as you can. Increase fresh fruit and vegetables and cut down or cut out the red meat and pork. Canned food, including soup, tend to be the worst sodium offenders. So does food have to be bland now? Absolutely not. Many spices have no salt in them and you can use as much as you like. Try red pepper, black pepper, paprika, cinnamon, onion, and garlic powder, just to name a few. There are also salt substitutes, but I recommend that you talk to your doctor before using them. They contain potassium chloride instead of sodium chloride and will not raise your blood pressure, but high amounts of potassium can be dangerous for some patients, especially those with kidney disease. You do not have to do everything I just told you all at once. How much you do really depends on how motivated you are. If you've recently had a heart attack or a stroke, you are probably very motivated. For everybody else, the fact that you're watching this video means that you're at least a little bit motivated, so do a little bit at a time. Start with the changes that seem most reasonable or doable to you, and come back and watch this video again later when you feel ready to do more. Check the nutrition facts in every package of food before you buy them. Look for sodium first. Remember, sodium is salt. As a quick rule of thumb, try to avoid anything listed at 10% or more. This doesn't always work, however, and I will use myself as an example of how you can mess this up and what you can do to correct it. Here we have the nutrition facts for Chex Mix, available at the General Mills website. As you can see, we're at 9% right here. So this passes the test, except that one night I ate half the bag. How did this happen? Simple. I was watching Game of Thrones on the couch, and every time I got stressed out, I shoveled a pile of snacks in my mouth. By the end of the episode, half the bag was gone. Since there are eight servings in this bag and I ate half, that means I ate four servings. That is 230 milligrams of sodium times four, which is 920 milligrams of sodium. That's 9% times four or 36% of my daily allowance. But wait, this gets worse. The government assumes a 2,500 milligram salt per day diet, way too much for most adults. If I want to limit myself to 1,500 milligrams of sodium, that means I actually ate 61% of my daily salt allowance in one hour. So how do we solve this problem? Well, one way would be for me to stop watching Game of Thrones, but that's not going to happen. Seriously, you need to be honest with yourself about what you are and are not willing to do. There's no point in coming up with a plan that you aren't going to follow. That's just setting yourself up for failure. So what I did the next time was I got out a small bowl and measured out one half cup or one serving of the snack. This worked for me because it was never my intention to eat four servings. Obviously I needed more food so I added the fresh fruit and vegetables that I enjoy. With everything I planned to eat that night laid out before me, I paced myself and enjoyed a healthy and satisfying snack. This is my book, Didn't Get Frazzled. It's a novel about four years in the life of an intrepid young medical student set in the grueling world of an elite New York City medical school. Blue Ink Review called it the best fictional portrayal of med school since ER. Readers will savor the experience. They also gave me a starred review, which is very kind of them. I can't promise that reading my book will help you in any way with your blood pressure, but I do hope you'll enjoy it. Thank you for watching part one of Didn't Get Frazzled Presents, Hypertension for Patients. For additional information, go to my website, davidzhirsch.wordpress.com and click on videos. There you'll find all of my videos along with hyperlinks for the references, including two different DASH diet sample menus and an excellent BMI calculator. Please like and click subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I post another detailed video on various common medical conditions. Stay tuned for part two and remember, don't get frazzled. You can do this. I wish you all good luck and good health.